All right, all right. Airport Life Las Vegas. Uh, forgive me if I'm not that enthused. I'm not. It's 8.30 in the morning. I'm not particularly a morning person. Moreover, I'm not a morning person ever in Vegas. But hey, I got to catch a flight, so it is what it is. I got my Jamba Juice. I did orange and carrot and ginger. I don't know how I feel about putting the orange and the carrot together. Both are my favorite when they're independent, but I combined them into this one, so I'm going to see how it is. I haven't tried it yet. And then I got a boar's head chicken and cranberry sandwich. This is this looks really good. And of course, one of my mainstays when traveling is a black smart water. Um, so I'm going to try this. Let me try this real quick. This is really good. I didn't know how it was going to be with the uh, the sweetness of the carrot and then the acidity of the orange, but it came together really nice. And uh, it's not too gingery either. Sometimes when you add ginger to a drink, it gets a little overbearing. Okay, so let's get right to this. Um, Aria versus Bellagio versus Wynn versus Venetian. First of all, like what a string of hotels. Um, I purposely picked these because I think that those are probably the four best properties, the four most luxurious properties on the strip. Unfortunately, the Aria video will never be published because it doesn't exist because I had a migraine those entire three days and nights. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it, but I will put the other three videos in the description below and I'll probably post a comment as well and put them there just so they are easily accessible. Um, I'll tell you, originally I thought it was gonna be Aria number one, Win number two, Venetian number three, and then Bellagio number four and I was wrong. My preconceived notion was wrong. And that's why I'm really, really glad I did this trip and I'm doing this video. So let me start with number four. And number four is the Bellagio. Um, it's, a, it's classic, it's traditional, it's, it's a legacy hotel. It's always gonna be one of, the, one of the most iconic and marquee hotels on the strip, but there just hasn't been any money put into it for the longest time. Uh, the rooms really haven't been updated that much. And though they have updated the grounds, it's really not a place that is, how do I say, that engaging. I mean, they have the water fountains outside, but after you see the fountains, what else is there to do? And then the same thing about the um, garden conservatory on the inside. I mean, once you do the fountains and the conservatory, what else is there? I don't really know. Um, arguably, arguably, depending on who you talk to, it has some of the best restaurants in Vegas. I mean, it does. It has three Michelin star restaurants on site. Sometimes you can't get three in a city and this has three on site. So if you really like that ultra fine, exquisite high end dining, that's gonna be the property for you. But you also better like thousand dollar dinners for two because that's what it's gonna cost. Besides that, like I said, it's, it's iconic. It's in so many movies and it is such a pop culture icon is that it's hard to even put this last, but Compared to the Pure Group, compared to the other three hotels, it, it is. Here's who wants to stay at the Bellagio. I think someone who wants that strip experience, but you're still somewhat insulated from the strip. It has a pretty high-end crowd, and it doesn't have a lot of bars and lounges, so you're not going to get that nightlife crowd. I think there is like one club, but no one goes to that Bellagio club. Everyone is at the different hotels when it comes to club and, and late night stuff. So if you want that Vegas strip experience, but you want it to be high end, you want it to be a little quieter, and you want to be insulated from the strip, I'd say check out the Bellagio. Originally, I thought the Aria was gonna be number one. I went into this video expecting Aria to be number one, and it's number three. It's number three. Um, the restaurants are remarkable. You know, there's a, there's a Mastro's and there's a Javier's and uh, there are a few other ones. And the sh shopping is some of the best in Vegas, arguably the best with the Crystal Shop. But the rooms were just okay. Um, I'd say they're better than the Cosmo. So if you stay at the Cosmo, um, they're kind of like the Cosmo, just a bit more high end, a bit more luxurious. But overall, there was, really wasn't much at the Aria that engaged me. Um, I'm not a big pool scene guy uh, in, in terms of like a day club, so that doesn't really intrigue me. And I'm not a big nightclub person either. So, and plus, like, I don't think you should stay at a hotel for the nightclub or for the or for the day club anyway. You can grab a taxi and get to any nightclub or day club within 15 or 20 minutes easily. The property is huge. It's in a great area of the city center. You know, it's connected to 
Vudara. It's connected to the Cosmo. You know, you have the Waldorf Astoria right there. Not that anyone is going over to the Waldorf Astoria for fun. It's kind of like an anti-fun hotel. But yeah, um, I just wasn't that engaged. It just, it just didn't move me. It didn't speak to me. There weren't a lot of lounges and the restaurants were okay. But besides that, it just was kind of just mediocre to me. So I went in thinking it was going to be my, be my number one hotel, but it ended up to be number three. Number one and number two were leaps and bounds above number three and four and number one and two were very close. I really thought about this deeply and I ended up putting the Venetian at number two. It was very close to being number one. Um, it just lost on like just a few little intricate specific things but the property was remodeled back in 2018 or 2017 so it's pretty freshly remodeled only a couple years. Um, it has a brand new wave of lounges and uh, restaurants. Uh, you know, I, I, ate at, I ate at Emerald Lagasse's. I ate at Wolfgang Puck's. I think the restaurants there are, are some of the best in Vegas, if not the best. The grounds, I think, are probably the best grounds in Vegas. Just walk around the property is something magical. You have the canal shops, the Grand Canal shops for shopping. Uh, if you're a pizza person like me, there were like over 20 places to eat pizza. Uh, it's a AAA five diamond, one AAA five diamond, like every year in existence. It really, really just embodies luxury class and then a little bit of coolness. It is a really cool hotel. Not as cool as like the Wynn, um, but definitely a really, really cool place to be. I did put the Wynn at number one. I, I thought the Wynn was gonna be number two. I ended up putting it at number one. My original order I thought it was gonna be is that I thought it was gonna be Aria number one, Wynn number two, Venetian number three, and Bellagio number four. And that order got flipped quite a bit. The Wynn is, is still the best. And what's really spectacular about it is that it has been number one for like the past 15 years. It has not relinquished its title. With after the Cosmo came around and after Aria came around and after all these newer hotels came around, it still is the big dog. It was by far the best room. Uh, if you're a big room person, I think you have to book at Wynn or Encore, um, but I'm talking about the Wynn because that's where I was. It had excellent dining, you know, SW Steakhouse, it had Wang Lee. The room service menu, if you're a big room service person, it was the best room service menu I've ever seen. I really like that north end of the strip. If you want to be at that north end of the strip, it probably is the best hotel. Like I said, just incrementally above uh, the Venetian, but it did rank higher for me. Between the win and between the Venetian, I would say win barely. If you want to be in your room, pick the win. But if you want the better property, pick the Venetian. And they are really, really close. All right, so yeah, um, number one was win, number two was Venetian. If you want to be on the best property, I would say pick with the, pick the Venetian. If you want to have, if you want to walk around and have like days to walk around and not be bored, pick the Venetian. The wind got a little small after like day number two when I was there for three nights, but coming back to that room was a magical, comforting, relaxing, serene place to be every single time. The Alexa in the room for the wind was really a game changer. And uh, I mentioned this in my video, it seems really small, but being able to control some of the most fundamental parts of your room from like just by voice and from being in your bed was really convenient and uh, it, it was a game changer for me. Um, both had excellent restaurants and both are right next to each other and if you have the opportunity I would go two nights at each one. Two nights win, two nights Venetian or even three nights at each one. Three nights Venetian, three nights win but that of course is if you want to be in Vegas for a week which is questionable at best but yeah um aria I, I went in thinking it was going to be number one and it was number three and number one and number two were well above number three and number four i think the north end of the strip is still the best spot to be i know the city center has a lot of clout behind it but um i don't think it has the class or the luxury that the north end does with the venetian and the win uh, I would say that the South End, the city center with Aria and Cosmo is definitely the cooler place to be. I think you're gonna find a younger crowd. I think you're gonna find a hipper, more energetic crowd. But if you're looking for coolness and luxury, you have to pick the North End of the Strip, uh, Wynn or Venetian, you can't go wrong with either. All the links in the description below. I gotta catch my flight and I'll see you in the next one.